Hey everyone, welcome back to Calculus 2. This will be lecture 5 of the course and in this in this uh, section we're going to discuss integration by substitution and so this is where we'll we'll get into the um, idea of a u substitution uh, being used to integrate a function. Um, so this section is uh, this will be an ex this is an extremely important integration technique, uh, possibly the most used integration technique, maybe uh, maybe second only to integration by parts. Um, it's uh, this technique is going to be really comparable to the chain rule uh, technique that we had uh, in in with differentiation. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so we'll call this section 1.5 integration by substitution. Okay, <clears throat> so recall uh, previously we've talked about having y equal a function of u and u equaling g of x. Given this, the derivative d dx of f of g of x uh, is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x. Okay, so this is the chain rule from uh, calculus one. So then the antiderivative definition implies that the integral of f prime of g of x times g prime of x dx should be equal to f of g of x plus c, which would be f of u plus c, right? So this is basically like, so the derivative goes, you know, starts with this and gets you here. And then from the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that we can integrate this and get back to the original, right? That's the interchange, the, uh, in, the inverse nature of these two um, operations, integration and differentiation. Um, let, so let's take this as kind of the starting point for integration by substitution. And let's look a little bit closer. Okay, so let's get the theorem out here and see what's going on. So uh, let g be a function whose range is an interval i. Okay, uh, let f be a function that is continuous on i okay if uh, g is differentiable um, if g is differentiable on its domain and f is an antiderivative big F is an antiderivative of little f on i, then the integral of f of g of x times g prime of x dx is equal to big F of g of x plus c. Okay, so uh, you could also say if u equals g of x, then du equals g prime x dx, and the integral of f of u du is equal to f of u plus c. Okay, so kind of two ways to think about it. So this is sort of the <clears throat> explicit kind of like chain rule way of thinking about it, which is fine. 
we'll start with that and then this is sort of a you know uh, explicit substitution kind of way of thinking about it they're equivalent right but we'll um we'll look into it in a second here so <clears throat> the key here well one of the keys may possibly the key is <clears throat> to get serious about pattern recognition. <laughs> so pattern recognition is really important with these use substitutions. Okay, pattern recognition is important. So let's let's do an example here. So if I have the integral of 2x times x squared plus 1 to the fourth power dx. This is going to fit the pattern this fits the pattern of the integral of f of g of x g prime of x dx. Okay, So namely we would say f of g of x is equal to x squared plus 1 that's the x squared plus 1 to the fourth power part Right, so then obviously the g of x here is the x squared plus 1. And the g prime of x is the 2x out front, right? Okay, so you got f of a function, f evaluated g of x, that whole thing, that, that composite function, times g prime of x. And so you can see all those pieces here. You got the f of g of x, the g of x naturally is inside the f of x and the g prime of x is 2x. So here's your 2x, here's your f prime of g of x, or sorry, your f of g of x, and then this piece inside is your g of x, right? So this may seem like a lot of craziness, but we'll do some more examples and hopefully the pattern will start to, the patterns will start to emerge. Here's another example of, of this uh, pattern, right? So what about the integral of 3x squared times the square root of x cubed plus 1 dx, right? So that whole that whole deal. Well, the f of g of x in this case is the x cubed plus 1 square root. So that means the g of x is what's inside there, the x cubed plus 1. And so then naturally the rest of it outside here you can see is the 3x squared, which is the derivative of g. Okay, so let's let's write this really explicitly. So you could you could reverse this and kind of write it like this instead. Right, so this is the <clears throat> f of g of x part. This is the g prime of x part and then so you can see naturally that this piece here inside that's the g of x part okay so you can kind of see all the parts there and that's that's probably the most important thing about um this this kind of uh this kind of problem this this method right is just being able to i spot this this pattern when when it's present so another example, this one's slightly less obvious, I think. Secant squared x times tangent of x plus 3. So you've got kind of these two pieces. So here you've got a f of g of x in this tangent of x plus 3 part. And so that means you've got a g of x function here, which is just the tan x part, and a g prime of x uh, piece in the front here, right? So when you differentiate tangent, you get secant squared. Okay, so this one's a little, like, slightly less obvious, I think. Okay, so these are all examples where, you know, the pattern is explicitly in the integrand. You know, you explicitly have f of g of x, g prime of x in the integrand. Now, very often, um, in fact, maybe most of the time even, 
you will have an integ integrand that almost fits this pattern, but not quite. And so it may be possible to change the integrand in some way so that it does fit this pattern. Right? So consider, consider an example here. Like, so if I have x, the integral of x times x squared plus 1 to the fourth power. Right, so here I, this is like an example that we just looked at, but if I have f of g of x equals x squared plus one to the fourth power, then that means g of x would be x squared plus one, and g prime of x would be two x. Now, we almost have that, right? We certainly have the f of g of x and the g of x part, it's just our g prime is a little different, right? We only have x, we don't have two x. Right, so the pattern isn't quite there. But this is an example where we can easily convert this into a form that does fit this pattern. Right, so namely, we can write the integral of x times quantity x squared plus one to the fourth power. That can be rewritten as two over two times the integral of x, x squared plus one to the fourth power which of course can be written as one half times the integral of two x times x squared plus one to the fourth power. Right, so basically we've added the two in where we need it, but we just have to, you know, sort of compensate by, you know, dividing the whole integral by one half at the end. Right, and then so in this way, we can see that here we have the pattern, right? We have our f of g of x equals x squared plus one to the fourth power. Our g of x is x squared plus one, and our g prime of x is two x. So we have all of the pieces. We can fit this pattern together and quickly calculate this integral. Okay. Good, so these are just examples of spotting the pattern. Now let's go ahead and do some examples where we actually use this technique to um, identify uh, an indefinite integral. So let's uh, evaluate the integral of x squared plus one. So I guess this is what we just talked about. Um, yeah, let's do the second power, just make it different, uh, times 2x dx, okay? So, so here we would let, right, so just basically the, the key to doing these integrals is to just kind of recognize a pattern, maybe make a note of the pattern just while you're doing it. So f of g of x equals x squared plus 1 squared, that means g of x is x squared plus one, and g prime of x is two x. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so then what we need to do, right, so we've got our integral, now what did the theorem say? Right, well the theorem said then that this should be equal to f of g of x plus c. Okay, so so what is our f of g of x? Well, that's just going to be the antiderivative of the f function, right? And so in the, in, in this case, it would be equal to uh, one third x squared plus one to the third power plus c. Right, so we would integrate the f part of this, which would be like this thing here. Right, so this would be like kind of that uh, power rule. Right, the, it would be, you'd raise the exponent, you'd raise this piece of it to the two plus one power and divide by two plus one. Right, so that's all we've done. And so the integral is really easy to find um, using this technique. How about another example? Evaluate the integral of 5e to the 5x dx. 
So in this case, the gx, g of x, is equal to 5x. Okay, and that means g prime of x is 5. Right, and so we have that pattern. So the f of g of x, well, I guess I should put that in there too. The f of g of x is e to the 5x. Right, so we have that e to the 5x, and we've got the g prime of x out front, actually the 5. So this fits the pattern perfectly. So the integral of 5 e to the 5x dx should be equal to, well, it's going to be equal to f of g of x plus c. Now, what is the antiderivative of f? Well, it's just e itself, isn't it? So this would be, again, equal to e to the 5x plus c. Okay. <clears throat> so this is, um, this is a, amazingly convenient, right? So basically just taking the idea of the chain rule and basically reversing it on itself. Okay, now, sometimes um, you can just kind of do this sort of plug and chug approach to this and you'll be fine. But I think what most people tend to do is they tend to gravitate towards a formal change of variables. Okay, so a formal change of variables. And it's basically going to, it's going to, it's going to be based on this integration by substitution idea, this theorem that we just looked at. Um, but what we're going to want to, what we want to do with the formal change of variables is we want to completely rewrite the integral in terms of u and du. So this is usually advantageous because it, it just helps you to keep everything straight. It helps keep sort of the patterns, uh, the patterns kind of, kind of sort of fall out of the change variables. And it's, um, it makes it harder to kind of miss something, right? As well as the fact that there are like niceties that can come along with the change of variables, which we'll get into in a moment. Let's talk this method through a little bit closer. Let's talk this through. What What is this all about? So letting u equal g of x, right? Then du, the derivative of u, is equal to g prime of x dx. So we have the integral of f of g of x g prime of x dx is equal to the integral of f of u du, which is equal to f of u plus c. OK, so this is sort of the formal setup. But let's, let's so you can kind of see that this part here is captured by this du, right? So that's this piece here becomes that. And then f of g of x is just f of u. All right, so that's sort of notationally how these how this this change of variables works out. Let's 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 do some examples and I think the method will will come become pretty clear after a couple of examples. So let's evaluate the integral of 2x minus 1 square root dx. We're going to use change of variables on this explicitly. So we'll set u equal to 2x minus 1. Okay. So then du is equal to 2 dx, right? Just differentiating this, we get 2 times dx. Okay. So what that means then is that if I have the square root of 2x minus 1 dx, then what I have is the um, oh sorry. What I have is the integral of the square root of u, and then I still have this dx, and I can't substitute two dx in for dx. So what I can do is I can take this little equation here, and see that du over two is equal to dx. 
So the dx part of it, I just plug in du over 2. Okay, And this can look a little cumbersome at first. Um, but uh, I think, you know, after you mess with it a few times, you kind of recognize, okay, this is really just 1 half times du. So let me write that explicitly. So this is the square root of u times 1 half times du. Okay, and then what you obviously would want to do here is write this as 1 half times the integral of the square root of u du. Okay, so important to notice here, all I've done <clears throat> is I started with this function here, sorry, this integral here with this integrand, and instead of the square root of 2x minus 1, I plug in the square root of u, right? And that's just because I've chosen 2x minus 1 as my g of x, and so u equals 2x minus 1. U equaling 2x minus 1 implies that du, the derivative of u, is equal to 2 times dx. Okay, and that's also going to imply that dx itself is equal to du over 2. Okay, so I just make those substitutions. I substitute here with this, and then I substitute this guy with that thing over there. When I do all of that, I get this right here. <clears throat> Okay, and then I can integrate this as just, you can think of it as 1 half times u to the 1 half. Okay, and then that is just, what, it's 1 half, and then it's u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, plus c, which is 1 half times 2 thirds u to the 3 halves, which is one third u to the three halves. Okay, and then what's u? At the, at the end, of course, you wanna ditch the u variable. Sorry, these are all plus c, gotta hang on to that. At the end, you wanna ditch the, <clears throat> the u variable and go back to your original variable using this up here. So this would be one third two x minus one to the three halves power plus whatever your constant of integration happens to be. Okay, so I know that that seems like what in the world, <clears throat> but it's all really quite simple actually. You pick a u, right, and the u should correspond to basically the g of x from the previous method, from the chain rule, right? So it's gonna be the inner part of the integrand usually. So u equals 2x minus 1. From that, you differentiate and you get du equals whatever u prime is, in this case 2 times dx. If necessary, you solve for dx, right? Sometimes it's necessary, sometimes it isn't. And then plug everything in, integrate with respect to u, and then convert everything back to x's. Okay, let's do another example. <clears throat> Let's evaluate the integral of x times the square root of 2x minus 1 dx. Okay, so here we want to let u equal 2x minus 1. So then du is equal to 2 dx. Okay. All right. So... <clears throat> we can say that du over 2 is equal to dx. So let's. So I, usually what's a good idea to do is to kind of look at what you've got so far and see can you substitute everything fully, right? So you can definitely get this part here can be written as u. This part here can be written as du over 2. But I'm still stuck with this x in the front. So one of the things that will commonly happen is that you will have some sort of straggler piece here. So what you can do is you can just use this to rewrite in, in terms of u. So u equaling 2x minus 1, it's going to imply that 2x equals u plus 1, which is going to imply that x itself, this little x here, should be written as u plus 1 over 2. Okay, so I know this seems like a lot, but, but now we have all the pieces. We've got this piece here for that, we've got this piece here for the dx, and then x can be written like this. <clears throat> and so what happens when we do all of this? <clears throat> well, we get the following. <clears throat> the integral of x times the square root of 2x minus 1 dx. K 
can be written as the integral of u plus 1 over 2 times the square root of u times du over 2. Okay, and then I, obviously you're going to want to clean this up as much as possible. And when you do that, the, the twos can be multiplied together and you get 1 fourth on the outside. And then you have u plus 1 times, and I'm going to write this as u to the 1 half du. That's a du. Well, it looks a little bit like a w, but it's supposed to be du. <clears throat> and then, of course, you can rewrite that as 1 fourth times the integral of u to the 3 halves plus u to the 1 half du. And kind of switching pages here. That can be integrated really easily, right? 1 fourth. And then u to the 3 halves would become u to the 5 halves over 5 halves plus u to the 3 halves over 3 halves plus c. And you get, let's rewrite everything, 1 fourth and then it's 2 fifths u to the 5 halves plus 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c. Okay, and <clears throat> most of this stuff can, there's a lot of canceling that can happen. The twos can cancel with the four. So I guess we could write it as one half u to the five halves over five plus u to the th three halves over three. And so you would get <clears throat> u to the five halves over 10 <laughs> plus u to the 3 halves over 6 plus c. And then you don't want to stick with u. At the end of the day, you want to get rid of the u's and plug back in whatever u was. In this case, u is equal to 2x minus 1. So this would be 2x minus 1 to the 5 halves power over 10 plus 2x minus 1 to the 3 halves power over 6. And there we go. So that's the integral. So when you <clears throat> so when, the, when you evaluate this integral, this is this is the form of the family of antiderivatives for this guy. Okay. So again, this is one of those techniques that are um, can seem very tricky at the onset. But after you do two or three of these, maybe three or four even, <laughs> maybe four or five, you you really it be, it all, it becomes like second nature. It's it becomes you know I think you know if you remember learning the chain rule, it probably seemed extremely cumbersome initially, but after you do it a few times, you realize that it's actually fairly fairly intuitive, and that's the same thing with this u substitution integration technique. Let's do another example. Let's evaluate this guy. Sine squared of 3x times the cosine of 3x. Okay. So here we're going to use the change of variable, the u substitution technique. So let's let u equal sine of 3x. Now notice this is sine of 3x squared, right? Sine squared of 3x. So this is like the inside function of a u squared, okay? So then du is equal to the derivative of sine of 3x. Now you gotta use the chain rule on this, and so you would get cosine of 3x times three. So I'm just gonna write it as three cos 3x dx, okay? And so that means then that uh, du over 3 is equal to cos 3x dx, right? So just kind of looking up here, you see, okay, I've got this piece taken care of with this u, so this will just be u squared. And then this whole thing here is going to be du over 3. 
Okay, so the whole thing is is I can substitute something in for the whole the whole expression, the entire integrand, and what I get then is u squared times du over three, which is obviously very easy to integrate. One third times the integral of u squared du. So that's one third times u cubed over three. So I get 1 ninth u cubed. And then my u just jump, I just toss my u back in and we're good. So this would be 1 ninth, and then it's the u is sine of 3x. And so now it's cubed. Okay, so probably better written as 1 ninth sine cubed. 3x plus c. Okay. Now, um, you know, just like we've seen in the past, uh, you know, any of these integrals that we evaluate, we can confirm uh, the accuracy of the thing by differentiating, right? So if I wanted to check this, I could differentiate this and I would expect to get back this integral, right? So let's do that in this case. Let's differentiate 1 ninth sine cubed 3x plus c. So when I differentiate this, let's pull the 1 ninth out. And let's write it as sine of 3x cubed. And then I'm going to drop the c because I know that the derivative there is 0. I'm going to just put plus 0. Okay, just to make it clear what happened to that. Um, so this is the chain rule inside the chain rule inside the chain rule, right? So you got one ninth on the outside, and then I'm gonna have, I gotta differentiate the, uh, so when I do this, what I end up with is three times sine squared of three x, Okay, differentiate the sine of 3x and I get cosine of 3x times 3. Okay, now does this all sort of sort out? Yeah, the 3 and 3 are 9, so the 1 ninth disappears, and I just have sine squared 3x times cos of 3x. Right, which is uh, exactly what we started with. Perfect. Okay, so you should be able to differentiate anything that you integrate and get back to the original, um, the original problem. Okay, so <clears throat> done a bunch of examples. Let's talk through. Um, let's 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 uh, kind of offer up some guidelines for change of variables. So guidelines. Guidelines are nice, right? So th this can be a little bit tricky. So when you're doing a, a change of variable integration, what you want to start with is by you want to start by choosing a u. So you know, choose a u equals g of x. You know, and it's this is usually the inner part. the inner part of whatever the function happens to be that you're integrating. Okay, then you want to, once you have that u, you want to calculate du, which is just basically g prime of x dx, right? So whatever g, whatever g happens to be, differentiate it. And then once you've done that, you want to rewrite the integral in terms of u and du. I guess and du, I mean, I'll say that, but really that should be kind of self-explanatory. Okay, so you wanna rewrite the integral in terms of u, and then you want to integrate. Okay, integrate, you know, the integrals in terms of u, so integrate across those u variables, and then uh, obviously replace 
uh, u with g of x in the end. Okay. Okay, so that's the idea. And then, of course, if it's easy, you might as well verify your integration by differentiating the result. I guess I'll put that in there. Verify by differentiating the result, right? That's kind of like your elementary school teacher telling you to, you can always check multiplication by division or vice versa or addition by subtraction. It's basically the same idea, right? So it makes sense to do that, especially if it, the derivative is easy to calculate. If it isn't, then maybe it can hold off. But um, there, so these are the guidelines, kind of the steps that you would want to take for calculating these type, this type, using this technique with integration. Okay, all right, so let's talk about, let's get a theorem out here. So this theorem is called the general power rule for integration, and we've certainly seen this already, but let's, let's bring it out, and we're gonna recast it a little bit in, in terms of these u substitutions. So, uh, this is the general power rule for integration. Okay, if G is differentiable, then the integral of G of X to the nth power times g prime of x dx is equal to g to the x n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. Okay, of course here n is not equal to negative 1. <clears throat> All right, now kind of the this is more general because uh, Previously, we had been saying something like, previously, we said the integral of x to the n dx is x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Well, here we're saying x, it doesn't have to just be x. Now it can be an, a function all its own. So another way to say it using the u substitution language is to say that the integral of u to the n du is equal to u to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c, where u is equal to g of x. Okay. All right, so this is basically kind of what we just discussed, right? But specifically, when you've got an exponent here, right then the, the pattern becomes very obvious um, and very it's super convenient to think of it in this in these terms so let's do some examples of just seeing this pattern in the integral so if i have three times three x uh, minus one to the fourth power dx right then i can write that I can change the order there, 3x minus 1 to the fourth times 3dx, right? Now here, this part here, this is my u to the fourth, and this would be my du. <clears throat> right, if I differentiate 3x minus 1, I just get 3, right? 3dx, right, so that's that part. So I would just say, I, I could straight integrate this really quickly by just saying, okay, it's 3x minus 1 to the fifth power over 5 plus c, right? So then this piece here would be u to the fifth over 5. Okay. Right, so this is, this is you know, using the u substitutions, you would, you would naturally arrive at this answer. But in some cases, you can just see it um, if you get kind of get this pattern built into your into your thinking. So another example: e to the x plus one times e to the x plus x dx. All right. So again, I could 
switch the order of this, e to the x plus x times e to the x plus 1 dx. Right now this you can think of as your u to the first power and that makes all of this the du. Okay, now notice if this is u, that's u to the first power, not u prime. If this is u, then when I differentiate this, I get e to the x plus 1, which is this part. So if this is u equals e to the x plus x, then du is equal to e to the x plus 1 dx. Right, and so this whole thing can be quickly evaluated as e to the x plus x squared over 2. Right, so then this would just be u squared over 2. Right, if I have a u to the first, then uh, the integral would give me u squared over 2. <clears throat> so hopefully the pattern is beginning to emerge here. Another example, how about the square root of, <coughs> excuse me, square root of x cubed minus 2 times 3x squared dx. Okay, so something like this. So this here would be like u to the 1 half. Um, so then the derivative of x, the if u is x cubed minus 2, then the derivative of that is 3x squared dx. And so this would be your du part. And so then the integral here would just be whatever u is, x cubed minus 2 raised to, you know, instead of 1 half, it'd be 1 more than that. So it'd be 3 halves over 3 halves plus c. And so this would be u to the 3 halves over 3 halves. All right. So that's, uh, you know, another example of kind of seeing this pattern. Let's do one more where we're just kind of focused on the pattern here. What if I have something like this, negative 4x divided by 1 minus 2x squared all squared? Something like that. Well, let's rewrite it first and let's write it like this. 1 minus 2x squared squared times negative 4x dx. Now, this part here, this is u to the, oh, that should be negative 2, sorry, because it came up, it came to the top, right? So the exponent becomes negative 2. This should be u to the negative 2 power. And so when I differentiate 1 minus 2x squared, I definitely get negative 4x. And so that means this whole thing here is the du. So the answer then, the integral would evaluate to 1 minus 2x squared to the what? Negative 1 power divided by negative 1 plus c. And so this would be u to the negative 1 over negative 1. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay, very good. So we'll do more examples of this, and this will be kind of a staple going forward, this kind of integration. Um, but what happens, what, what, what can we say about what? So what happens if we try to use this technique uh, with definite integrals? So that's what the that's the subject of this next theorem. So if the function u equals g of x has a continuous derivative. B and F is continuous on the range of G then so now we're talking a definite integral from A to B of F of G of X G prime of X DX right so this is the same integral that we talked about before except now it's a definite integral then it's going to be equal to the integral from of f of u du where we evaluate the limits of integration inside the g function 
So this is a little weird um, at first, but what this basically shows you is that you can de you can directly um, evaluate the u function in a definite integral, right? You can do it directly, but only after. But obviously, in order to do that, you have to adjust the limits of integration. Okay, so <laughs> right, so it it's uh, let's do an example. So the idea would be you can figure out you could you can calculate what the integral of f of u du is, and then just like before, whatever that antiderivative big F is, you can evaluate the top and the bottom directly, right? But in order to do that, you have to first adjust the bounds of the integration using the g function, okay? So let, let's do an example here. This is a little cumbersome at first, but I think when you once you see it, you, it's very obvious why this would be the case. So let's evaluate um, 0 to 1 of x times x squared plus 1 to the third power dx, right? So we're going to use substitution here, u substitution. So let u equal x squared plus 1, okay? Then du is equal to 2x dx. And so that means, you know, kind of looking up here, I've got x dx. So that would mean that x dx is equal to du over 2. Okay, so th these three here, so basically this part here and this part here is enough to get the substitution 100%. Okay, and so... But what we want to do here, what we want to pay special attention to is what to do with these bounds. So 0 to 1, we can't evaluate u at 0 and 1, but we can evaluate u. We just have to change these. So the lower limit, okay, if x is equal to 0, right, that's what the lower limit is, then u would be equal to 0 squared plus 1. So you basically want to plug in the lower limit into this whatever your u function happens to be. Okay, so this lower limit would switch to 1. The upper limit, x is equal to 1, then u would be equal to 1 squared plus 1. All right, so again, just whatever the u function happens to be, just plug that upper limit in there and see what you get, and you get 2. Okay, so we can rewrite the integral now. 0 to 1 of x squared plus 1 cubed times x dx. I right, just kind of switch the order there. Okay, so you switch the order. And then I've got a u. Um, so the u is x squared plus 1, so I get u cubed. And then x dx is du over 2. And then my lower bound was 0, now it's 1. My upper bound was 1, now it's 2. There we go. All right, and so now I can just take off and go right to the finish line here. And I get 1 half, and then u cubed du, the integral there, would be u to the fourth over 4. And then we're going to evaluate from 1 up to 2. So I get 1 eighth, and then it would be 2 to the 4th minus 1 to the 4th. So 1 eighth, and 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 8. So it's 16 minus 1, and so I get what? 15 over 8. Okay. So um, <clears throat> the real kind of trick here so this, there's no, this integral is like a good example of a u substitution. That's a great thing to see again but the real kind of tricky thing here that you have to the new thing with this example is this upper and lower limit swap okay so we're swapping out what the upper and lower limit needs to be for you and <clears throat> something to notice here is that you could do this calculation without changing the limits of integration you would just have to s convert your u back into x before you evaluate the integral so let me write this down. Notice, uh, notice that we could we could have left 
the limits of integration alone comma but that but that would require us to evaluate them differently basically would require us to convert from u back to x before doing the final evaluation. Okay, let's let's do an example. Let's do an example of that really quickly. So, <clears throat> just because I, I I you don't that's it's a convenience to swap those upper limits, but it's not necessary. So same same integral here, x squared plus plus one to the third power times x dx. Pardon the sloppy. This is I started writing three, and I meant to write a one there. So again, um, u equals x squared plus one, du equals two x dx, and du over two equals x dx. Okay, All right. So this thing here, we can. <clears throat> plug all this jazz into it and we get integral from well let's leave the bounds off for us for a moment let's plug this in so I would get u cubed times du over 2 okay now one of the things that you want to be careful of here is you know if you just write 0 and 1 that's actually a little misleading so you, what you might want to write is x equals 0 x equals 1 right because the Substitution has changed, right? The variables have changed to u. And so you wouldn't want to, if you left it at 0 and 1, the implication mathematically would be that you can evaluate this at 0 and 1. That would be incorrect, right? This is not equivalent to this evaluated at 0 and 1. It, it's equivalent, but only if you specify x equals 0, x equals 1. So, but I mean, that's not a big deal to do. You can just put that there. And then again, you would get the same thing, u to the fourth over 4. And then it would be x equals 0 up to x equals 1. And so then before we can plug these in, we have to uh, substitute back into the x variable, x squared plus 1 to the fourth power. And then it would be up from 0 up to 1, like so. Right, and then of course once you, once you convert back to x, then it's fine to just write this as 0 and 1, just so long as you know you know what you've done here and so then 1 8 and you could just evaluate this directly so 1 squared plus 1 is 2 2 to the fourth is 16 and then 0 squared plus 1 is 1 1 to the fourth is 1 and you get the same answer 15 over 8 okay okay so that is the idea all right, um, let's do a couple of slightly harder examples. Well, let's do a slightly harder example to begin with here. <clears throat> Say we want to evaluate the integral from 1 up to 5 of x divided by the square root of 2x minus 1. So let's let u equal the square root of 2x minus 1. Right? There are other things you could try first. Maybe you would say, oh, I just want to try 2x minus 1. If you try that, see where it gets you. It doesn't quite work out. Um, this is this is the one you would want to choose. Like that's the thing about integration, right? It's not like differentiation where it's like usually a direct line from beginning to end. With integrals, you have to, there's there's a trial and error aspect to it that uh, is a little un uncomfortable for some people. But if you try to perform this as a u substitution, choose letting u just be two x minus one, you'll come up short. Okay, so if this is our u then 
uh, are th this would this would imply that u is equal to um, 2x minus 1 to the 1 half okay and then our du is 1 half 2x minus 1 to the negative 1 half times 2 dx okay which is equal to I guess we should write that du equals the twos cancel and I really just get 1 over the square root of 2x minus 1 okay so really this is 1 over u isn't it okay so we kind of gone around let's let's pause for a second and see what we see here so u is equal to the square root of 2x minus 1 okay and I can rewrite that like this and then du is equal to this which is equal to 1 over the square root of 2x minus 1 so du is actually equal to 1 over u okay so let's see how much of this expression we've captured here oh sorry this should also have a have a dx in it um, hold on. Oh, yeah, sorry. There we go. Okay. So, um, let's see how much of this we've captured, right? So we've got this denominator is just u. Okay. Now, in the top, we've got, we've still got an x dx. We don't really have we've got the dx here and so that would that means that dx would be equal to u du okay but what about this x right we haven't captured the x yet right so kind of in a previous example we saw a way to get the x would be to use the whatever expression you call u, u equals square root of 2x minus 1 in this case, and figure out how to what x needs to be in terms of u. So uh, this is a, something that people will frequently do is they'll start substituting things in uh, just to kind of see where where they're at and what's what's missing. Now strictly speaking this is kind of abusive notation but let's let's just do this because I think this a lot of times this can be helpful in kind of parsing out like what's left to grab. So I have the square root of 2x minus 1 is u, so I have x over u, and the dx is u du. All right, so I've got those pieces. So what I'm missing is this x. I need to deal with this. Okay, so what I can do is I can come back up here to this. So if u is equal to the square root of 2x minus 1, then I can square both sides, right? And I get u squared equals 2x minus 1. And so that is going to give me an expression in u for x. So that means 2x is u squared. That means 2x is u squared plus 1, and x is u squared plus 1 over 2. Okay, and so then this can be tossed in for x. And so altogether, just kind of bringing this down here, I would have 1 to 5, and I would have u down below, right? Just using the substitution here. And we know that dx is u du. So I've got that piece there. And then the x, I just found an expression for that is u squared plus 1 over 2. Now, this is ugly, right? This looks awful. But the nice thing about it is that it actually cleans up a lot. It simplifies a lot, doesn't it? The u's cancel. Right, so the u's will cancel. And I've got the 1 half. Basically, I've just got this upper piece here don't I? I've got u squared plus 1 over 2 du. The u's cancel out, right? And then that basically makes the, the fraction really simple. Okay. 
And so we have to be careful here. This is x equals 5, x equals 1, because right, we haven't actually adjusted those yet. Let's do that adjustment. So the uh, lower x equals 1, then u equals would be the square root of 2 times 1 minus 1, which is the square root of uh, square root of 1, which is just 1, yeah, of course. Okay, so there's the lower, and then the upper, x equals 5, so u equals 2 times 5 minus 1, square root, which equals the square root of 9, which is 3. Okay, so that means we can change this to 1 to 3 of u squared plus 1 over 2 du. Now, this is very easy to, to evaluate. We can get to this really quickly. You can pull the 1 half out and do it like this. Probably the way to go. And so you get 1 half, and then this would be u cubed over 3 plus u, and it's 1 up to 3. So we can plug all of this in, and we get 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27 over 3. So 27 over 3 plus 3 minus one third plus one, okay? And that's a third times nine plus three minus one third minus one. And when you do all of that, you get 16 over three. Okay, so you can get to the end of this integral pretty quickly. Okay, now I just wanna Really quickly, um, well, actually, let's let's go ahead and stop the video. We'll have a part B for this video as well, simply because we're at an hour now, and I don't want the videos to be too much over an hour. So we'll uh, we'll be right back with uh, we'll be right back with part B, and we'll recap this problem and look at a, a few more items really quickly from this section.